Welcome to the Gear Slum, your one-stop shop for all things guitar culture nonsense. I'm Phil. <laughs> and I'm Cole. We slum it hard so you don't have to. time i was like hey i'm doing okay with this <laughs> i'm doing okay i'm saying all the right words <laughs> with the right inflections that's, that's usually the the kiss of death when you're analyzing it as you're doing it you know yes yes i think that's called getting ahead of your skis yeah exactly right i'm not a skier like you are yeah which is ironic because like the most common mistake that people make who aren't comfortable skiing is that they don't lean forward enough rather than leaning forward too much. So yeah. What kind of maniac would just start skiing and lean forward? Because too it's much? like counterintuitive that you actually have more control when you're leaning forward than when you're, than when you're leaning back. I know, but like the, but the impulse, the natural, like what you, what you exactly. think is going to happen is if I lean forward, I will go faster. And what I want to do is not go fast right now. Exactly. But that's why that's an interesting, it makes you think that maybe that saying was sort of birthed by somebody who wasn't that familiar with skiing. Mm. Ooh, that's even better. And I know there are like serious skiers in the audience who will probably tell me that I'm wrong, but that's my experience, especially with moguls. Like you want to, you want to lean back, but if you lean back at all, when you're doing moguls, it kills you. What What is moguls? Uh, just the big circle bumps. Circle bumps. What's circle bumps? Like the bumps on the on the run. Like you're... like the little ramp things. No, they're actual. Google moguls. And see. I thought mogul is like what what rappers aspire to become. That is the same word, and it's even the same spelling. So I don't, I don't know why the two. An important or powerful person, especially in the motion picture or me media industry. Whoa, a steam locomotive with three pairs of driving wheels. And then another one is a bump on a ski slope formed by the repeated turns of skiers over the same path, which in theory, that's how it's formed. But a lot of times they sort of, oh, maybe they just have like actual, maybe they have people do it. There probably isn't like a machine that does it. I bet they have snowboarders do it because they can sort of dig into the snow better. They seem to, they kind of ruin moguls actually a lot of times when they're going them, but that's a different, <laughs> that's a different conversation altogether. So do you see moguls there? Uh, In no. fact, mogul skiing is an Olympic event and it was sort of made very popular by a certain Johnny Mosley. Remember him? No. He sort of attained some level of, um, it, it was like 98. What were the Olympics in Japan mm. back in the nineties? I don't know. They were in, uh, Nagano. Naga, Naga, not going to work <laughs> anymore. <laughs> Uh, um, well, I just saw this, so I don't think it should be read on you the your podcast, but so you don't remember Johnny Mosley. He, no. he did. Okay. So the, so the moguls, and I'm, I'm totally going to butcher this story. This is just from my recollection, but the moguls, uh, are a bunch. You need to look up mogul skiing just to see what they look like, but it just looks like a whole bunch of circular bumps that are set in kind of like a like a chain link fence pattern you know or like a hex okay. they're all they almost look like a hex layout you know and and the point is you're you're zigzagging between them as you go okay and it sort of gives you something to push off of as you go oh, but I see. the the olympic event is 
the Olympic event is set up to where there's three mogul sections and in between them, there's two big jumps. So like you're judged based on how fast you get through and how clean all the moguls are, but then also the jumps. And at the time, everyone kind of did the same tricks on the jumps. They did a double twist or a triple twister, which is just like uh, your upper body and lower body spin in opposite directions, but just your skis are spinning, you know, yeah, left, right, I, left. And that's yeah, a I'm, triple. I'm, and I'm then, gotcha. and then on the second jump, it seemed like everyone was doing the same thing. It was a double twister spread. So you twist twice and then do a spread eagle, you know, mm-hmm. and that was like, and it's like really fast. Like you're trying really hard to get that many tricks in before you land. And he did, he did what I think it's called an iron cross, but basically you cross your skis behind you. Well, you like, you know, bring your, bring your heels up to your butt, essentially have your Mm -hmm. skis crossed. And then you like grab one of your skis or whatever and did a 360 iron cross. And it like, and it, it was like so different from all, cause all the other tricks are trying to be super fast and his, and just a single 360 on that high of a jump is like pretty slow, you know? But it was like super, I don't know, kind of, I don't know that he like revolutionized it, but he won the gold medal and it was like a big, it was like one of the more popular events from that Olympics. And ever since then, the mogul event is very different. Um, I don't know that it has like some, you know, super long history before that anyways, but, but he even had like a video game. He had Johnny Mosley uh, golf actually, which is weird. Cause like, what? <laughs> <laughs> no, what's that? <laughs> There's a golf. There's a golf game that's Johnny uh, something. No, it's probably not. Probably thinking of like Lee Trevino golf or something like that. But yeah, he was okay, he so, was uh, very popular. So I've got an and idea. also like part of it. It it resonated with me because that was in the '90s when I, I was a skier growing up. I skied a lot and um and there skiing wasn't as cool in the '90s. Right. Snowboarding was the thing to do. Right. It was and cool so in the think 80s. It probably resonated. It probably resonated with me. And I watched it live, weirdly. Like, I just happened to have seen it live. But it, it resonated with me more than uh, maybe because I was a skier or whatever. But that's your Olympic Minute. We're going to be doing this on the podcast leading up to the <laughs> Olympics, which are in Tokyo. Hey, going back to Japan, too. Look at uh, that. Oh, uh, Yeah. I just heard a thing on the podcast that they're saying that it's it's actually uh, countries lose money. um, Yeah, hosting the Olympics. Well, especially countries like like, I think Salt Lake City. Salt Lake City is still pointed to as kind of an example of how to do the Olympics right. Like for whatever reason, it worked out really well in Salt Lake City. I mean, winter and summer are very different, but. is but yeah, a lot of like I think Rio. <laughs> Don't be like that, Phil. <laughs> Don't be that guy. <laughs> um No, I think it's because like we're in this weird situation where we have a lot of facilities that are relatively close by. The airport is like right is only like 10 minutes from downtown and stuff. But yeah, I think Rio was like very damaged. Like they lost a lot of money on the Olympics in Rio. Oof. So and I the, think it's the yeah. same with like the World Cup too. Mm. Cuz countries like you know put up a big fight to try and host and then it right. ends up not actually helping them that much probably. Yeah, um and the, yeah, that yeah. Um What was I going to say about you were listening to a podcast about the Olympics. Yeah, eh, it wasn't that interesting. They were just saying it's it was like, like a freaking nerd. The uh, they were saying that the um, what's the the organization called that like IOC? Yes. So the IOC the International Olympic Committee. They have all these like ridiculous restrictions that they're putting on the the host country every year. And this year in particular, like they're, they're the same every year, but this year in particular, the stakes are really high because it's like, uh, well, wait a minute, like kind of, we're still in a pandemic. So what, especially for a lot of countries, like a lot of countries are not doing great still. Right. And so they're like, 
there's they're putting these like ridiculous restraints on the host country saying like um okay you're not allowed to do this and you're not allowed to do this and it's like basically all the ways that countries make money if they if they can make money <laughs> yeah hosting like, the olympics they're like not basically allowed to now do you're any just now yeah now you're just hosting because you have to and for honor right and and like so the like the idea of like hotels and all and restaurants none of that is happening because they're not letting foreign people come to the country to uh physically participate and they're like oh but it's yeah. still it's still broadcast and that's usually where all the money's made yeah it's made yeah, but like not for the local for, country exactly made it's for made like, for the freaking organization yeah exactly it's not made the country doesn't make like any for whoever money owns, on the national owns international the rights broadcasting. to it or whatever right right so so the like it's the same all, way it's the same way with college and probably even professional sports but like there's a lot of college towns whose economies mm. are boosted when you know when 50,000 people come to town to watch a football game or whatever yeah you know? that's yeah yeah that's interesting though the olympics so it's i guess the those restraints have always been there and there's just because there's never been like a global pandemic it's never like it's never been an issue because it's like if like you said like rio you know got hosed and everybody just goes well that's your fault <laughs> you know yeah well and like, and said, like, like okay you know you you toppled it up and it's like okay part of it was because like it was never i i won't pretend to know anything about brazilian politics or economy but i do know that they have a very small upper class and a very large lower class you know and obviously the Olympics were never about trying to help any poor people. Obviously it was about this right. huge spectacle. And, and a lot of it was sort of, you know, painting, putting lipstick on a pig type of thing. Also, but also there's, there's an element of like, I mean, you know, you know, this like international travel can be dangerous. You know, if you're going to yeah. a tourist country, you need to like watch out for blah, blah, blah. But like Rio is like one of the most dangerous. It's like extremely dangerous. And so yeah. then, so, so to go, Hey, look, we're hosting the Olympics. Everyone should, everyone who's a fan of the Olympics could, should come travel here. And it's like, yeah, no, bring, I'm not going Bring there. all your money. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> bring all your upper middle class money. Yeah. <laughs> to this place well, where, and, where there are literal mobs of children that mug people. <laughs> yeah. And also those like videos, right? Isn't that Rio? Uh, oh, I don't know. I mean, pro like, I'm sure some of it is, but it's also like so much of it was like trying to hide, like the hide the poverty and everything, you know? Oh yeah. Which is like, bad. it's like when the world cup is hosted in an African country, probably. Right. I know we're probably saying, I know I'm probably saying like tons of stuff that isn't pc or whatever but it, it's the same idea when you're you're like bringing a whole bunch of rich people from other countries to come in and enjoy and so your whole goal is to basically hide all the poor people you know <laughs> yeah um which by the way speaking of football which is a fun game hide the poor people i used to play it at <laughs> I, recess I, <laughs> uh the uh, speaking of football, um, I was made aware of. <laughs> Is that what we were speaking of? of? We were. You said, yeah, you said African yeah. countries. Oh, and, okay. Uh, oh, okay. I was made aware that I don't, you know, we both know, all, all of us know that I don't care about these things. However, yeah, I've been hearing. You tell us, you remind us every day. I don't remind you every day. I don't, but when it comes up, I feel compelled to remind you. Uh, but uh, Rob McElmahamahanimi, what's his name? Mac from uh, Mac Always Sunny. Uh, yeah. Uh, buying a football team with Ryan Reynolds and making a documentary about buying a football team. Weird. You look confused. You don't know about this? I'm telling you about a sports thing. I don't 
This is great. I mean, to be fair, it's like a pop culture thing as much as it's a sports thing, right? Uh, well, the fact that he bought the team. I'm just saying we need to get Jay back on here. Yeah, but when I think this documentary. I th- comes th- well, is it a European team or is it like an MLS team? It's a European team. It's a okay. I when I heard him talking about it on it's a podcast, a prim- Premier Premier League. It's a it's a fifth. It's a team that used to be great, and now they're a fifth. Blah blah blah. Oh, that and so does, they're, they're, that does ring a bell now that you say that. So they're like, okay, can we? So can we make this? They're trying to like salvage it or something, or they're at least well, trying. It to was track basically the, it was what Jay had said. The, See, I was kind of listening. It was what Jay had said. Like the cool well, thing like about t- about uh, football over there is that like anybody can, you know, Jay could, you know, yeah, get a totally. Team. Like you can and just like, start a team. Yeah, and if it's like if it like, does well, I can enough, just start then, a team with my buddies. Right. So. <laughs> So anyway, which is awesome. I, yes. So I'm I'm curious, and we need we need more of that. That's that's like it is weird that there aren't other level. I guess there's minor league baseball. It's weird that there's no minor league like American football, right? Yeah, like, I think it's the it, most lucrative and popular sport in the country by far. But like, and how do you like you need I guess infrastructure? College, I guess it's. I guess it's college football. That's what it is. College is the minor yes, league. Is the minor yes. Because college is super lucrative and it's just it but because the they're all split into conferences, like no but yeah, but but the good schools like That's you know, true. like Boise State for twenty years and BYU uh here and there once in a while, but not not since a long time ago. Well and uh, like they'll wouldn't it be wouldn't it be awesome if like the like the greatest college teams were like, it's like, okay, now you're going to play in the NFL. <laughs> yeah. Like that. Yeah. That's the thing. That, well, right. Like, but that you can, but they bump, wouldn't even move up. Like the way. problem with that, the problem with that is they just, because of how the current system is set up, they just wouldn't stand. Cause people will talk about that sometimes. And I know you don't want to get into an actual sports discussion, but like people say that like Alabama for a long time and still, I can't even remember who won the national championship last year. It must have been either Alabama or Clemson because they've been the two. Uh, they've been the two best team. But Alabama has basically like been to the champ. Oh, it was Alabama, and they destroyed their competition in you know, and they were undefeated. Um, people will say like, "Oh, could Alabama beat an NFL like the worst NFL team, the you know, the Lions or the Browns or whoever?" And they obviously couldn't because, by definition, an NFL team has all NFL players, and Alabama has like a bunch of future NFL players. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Because it's an age thing. Like if people, if Alabama had players that stayed there for ten years or whatever, it would be different. But, but like they graduate yeah, the, from one to the other because of their age. So it kind of yeah. So the like the 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 person who's been playing the longest has maybe been playing at that level for four years maybe five right four is all they can yeah unless if they like redshirt if they didn't actually play in very many games they can come back for a fifth year but you only have four years of eligibility and and that's a rule like to to prevent guys from like i'm gonna stick around and play some football yeah (laughs) yeah so redshirting is what they call it and i think it stems from like back in the day somebody would wear like a red thing to signify that they aren't allowed to play. Like they practice and everything, but, um, but somebody who's red shirting won't actually play in a game Hmm. and they'll call someone a red shirt freshman if they're actually a sophomore, but they didn't play their first year, you know, so they get an extra year of eligibility, but yeah, that's like a huge part of it. And a lot of players like in basketball, all the best players don't stick around the in college for more than a year. Usually but it's pretty common in football for players to play all four years just because you need to grow and whatever. Right. And, and they're the, the good teams are recruiting. So they're not getting like, they're, they're getting people, guys who are dedicated and like deliberately, like they're getting all the best players. Yeah. Like the good teams, their entire goal is to put people in the NFL. 
Right. You know, in theory, they, they care about winning so they can keep the trend going. But yeah, their their main goal is to put people in the NFL, I guess. But it's crazy how much money there is in college football. It It honestly, we've probably talked about this before, but I genuinely like and intentionally, I grew up as such a diehard uh, BYU football fan, but college football is such like, it's a pretty messed up system that the players are punished if they try and get any kind of compensation. And yeah. then meanwhile, you have all the people, all the rich white guys at the top who make millions and millions and millions of dollars off of them, off of their work, you know? Yeah. And it's like a pretty screwed up system and it's really exploitative too. Cause a lot of like, let's be honest, the majority of college football players, not like the vast majority, but I'm sure it's over half are people who come from like less than great circumstances. And the reason they're so dedicated to football is because they see it as one of their avenues their out own. of those circumstances, yeah. you know? And so they're basically exploiting that. Yeah. Which is pretty sad. Right. Because the, the, the kid who comes from a wealthy family, his parents want him focusing on other things like, okay, you could, you can do things like sports on the side. Yeah, exactly. As long as you are, you know, kicking ass with, which is like and everything, which is what makes me feel a little bit better about rooting for BYU because they don't, they like suck. And so most of their players are just like rich white kids who just happen to be going to school there, you know, <laughs> <laughs> there are other reasons I feel bad about rooting for BYU, but, yeah. um, but yeah, it is a weird, I don't know. It's, it's pretty screwed up. And this whole thing, like, it seems so sleazy to be like, oh, but they get a free education. And it's like, first of all, higher ed is a freaking scam and it's cost way, way more than it should in the first place. Yeah. Right. So it's like you artificially made this thing expensive and then said, oh, I'm going to give it to you for free. And it's like, you could argue that it should be free anyways for everybody, not just because yes. you happen to be good at hitting people, you know? Yeah. Don't my, my, my wife is constantly saying she, my she has this, <laughs> the, uh, what is it? Uh, the Nordstrom rack app on her phone. <laughs> and she will okay. constantly like show me something. She'll hold it up. She'll go, she'll go, look at these boots. They're $600 boots and they're on sale. <laughs> For $70. Yeah. And it's like, well, <laughs> and I'm like, mm, I don't, it's just like, it's just like when people are going to sell like a, something guitar related and they post in, on Facebook and they're like, what should I sell this for? There's this, there's this eBay listing that has it listed for $5,000. And it's like, I can list it for whatever I want, you know, <laughs> like Nordstrom well, rack story. Nordstrom just chose that price and maybe a couple suckers were willing to pay that, but like yes. they intentionally inflate that price so that they can mark it down later, you know? Right. Right. And make you feel like you're getting a deal. She's like, I have to buy it. It's 80% off. And I'm like, no, <laughs> I mean, that's, to be fair, that's... like $70 for shoes is like pretty reasonable, but still <laughs> not because they happen to be $600 but, before. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> I think there's literally a feature on the app that says, like that you can click that's like g like greatest deals. Yeah. That's how so like it most will, it, it will start with like the yeah. like the 80% the percent savings, yeah. And it's like no, that's that's not Yeah. That's not what you who cares about. Cuz again, that. the price, the original price is arbitrary. It means yes. nothing, you know. <laughs> yes. I shoes getting shoes for $25 is a really awesome that thing. That would be something. Yeah. And I don't care what they originally cost. If I'm paying yeah. $25 for shoes, I'm very excited. <laughs> yeah. Like if it's a Period. pair of shoes that functions and will function for a reasonable amount of time, then yeah, that's a great deal. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> uh, uh, I don't care that they're like Amazon basics brand or whatever. I know dude, Amazon basics. So good. I'd wear Amazon basics shoes. Uh, they keep, they keep like shaking that in, in front of me. Shoes in particular, Amazon basic shoes. Is that and really not, a thing? Yes, and I have not bit yet. Oh, I was joking. But they keep, I mean, it makes they keep sense. Going. If you don't know Gun Street Wiring Shop by now, you must be living in the dark ages. They are the premier hand-built wiring solution for all of your guitars. I have one in my Telecaster. I have a setup in there, five-way. It's great. have it in my Jazzmaster. It's amazing. 
actually put it in my Epiphone dot, brought the thing back to life. It's crazy. If you don't have it, you need it. Every guitar that you own will be better with Gun Street Wiring Shop. I promise. Also, if you join the street crew, you get a discount on the product. And I guarantee you'll enjoy it. If you get it and you don't like it, I will punch Cole in the face. That's my guarantee. Check it out right now at GunStreetWiringShop.com. Okay, like, here's something. That, here's a trend that I've, uh, that I've seen lately. That there's like a lot of people who are obsessed with finding suppliers. So they will find... Because cause like companies don't... This sounds like a very unintelligent thing to say. But most companies don't make anything anymore, right? What? Like most things that you buy that are that have a name brand on them was just somebody bought something from someone else and then applied their name brand to it. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. So like I've seen a lot of TikToks lately where in fact there's this one account where people will say like, "Oh, find the supplier for this." And I saw one today that was just gardening gloves. And they were like, "Who's the supplier for this gardening glove brand?" And he was able to do some sleuthing and find like tax records that pointed back to this parent company that then showed their suppliers. And then he was able to say, oh, it's this company in China. And then you can get in touch with them and say, hey, I want to buy 10 pairs of your gardening gloves. And you can just send them directly to me and it's way cheaper or whatever, you know. <clears throat> yes. And it's kind of what AliExpress does. I mean, that's it's not that Chipsons aren't the same because those are actual like counterfeit things, you know. But it's it's this it's a similar idea of like this guitar is being made in the same factory as those other name brand ones, but I just happen yeah. to be buying it through a different channel, you know. And so it's it's a pretty fascinating and that's I mean, that's what happens with all these pedal companies too. Are you frozen? Phil's frozen. I don't know. Or maybe I'm frozen and he's talking and I'm just farting into the wind. I, but, no, I, yeah, I think but it's the same cool. way with the pedal companies where you open them up and it's the same board inside and they just put it in a different enclosure or whatever. But it would be like you going then and finding what factory that board came out of and saying, I'm going to put it in my own enclosure for, <laughs> yeah, and I'll buy the board for $4 or whatever it is. Yeah. Heck yeah. So it's kind of, it's kind um, of fascinating. Hey, I've got an idea for um, for a segment that we can do with the two of us and maybe someday with the three of us. Uh, so during the pandemic, I was COVID given 19. these... COVID-19, COVID, SARS-CoV-2. I was given these... Uh, I, I don't remember why the... Um, one of the therapists at my school... <laughs> Gave these to all, gave this to all the teachers. Uh, I'm not sure what the intent was, but. So it wasn't just for you, though, at least. It wasn't me specifically. No, it was given out to every teacher. Um, it's like these conversation starter, like thoughtful conversation cards. Okay. <laughs> now, did here's I, my idea. Did I ever, did I ever talk about that, that school dance that we went to? And it was basically just my whole band we all went in a group together and our keyboard player who was pretty awkward made flashcards conversation flashcards to use during the date. Whoa. Is that basically no. what these are? Uh, well, they're they're Uh, maybe not. Okay. Let's hear it. Okay. So here's my idea. You know, the, you know how, when you, you eat fortune cookies and you say you add embed at the end of the fortune cookie, and then everybody laughs. Uh -huh. So here's my idea. Or, yeah. Um, Polite chuckle. So here's my idea. For these questions, we're going to say at the end of each question, with gear. So whatever the question is, okay. we're going we're gonna to add with gear and we're going to answer it. Not whatever the question is, but we're going to answer it with the... Have the we done this before? With gear at the end. This sounds weirdly familiar to me for some reason. Oh no. Have I have I suggested this before and then forgot that I suggested it? I hope not. Okay, Maybe, well but here it is. It's no it's no less entertaining if that's the case. <sighs> that's true. Okay, so here's the question. 
What are people usually surprised to find out about you with gear? Hmm. Okay, I'll go first. So it's not find out about it's not find out about your gear necessarily. It's find out about you, but with your gear. Yeah, yeah. Or with it, gear well, in general. You take it however you want. However you want, but let's like let's make it gear related. So here's mine. I have never owned a um I've never owned a legitimate power supply for my board <laughs> even though that's a good that's a good even one. though i have a large pedal board with i don't know like maybe 12 with with 12 or 15 with like some relatively fancy pedals too yes yes like you don't have you don't have some super boutique board but you also you do have some pretty expensive pedals on there don't you yes yes that's great. So what do you actually, do you just use like a one spot or something? <laughs> it's, it's so dumb. I have a, I have a, uh, I think it's called Godlike, which is like, it's a one spot. It's like a daisy chain, but it's got more, more, you know, juice. But then I also have, um, I think it's the one spot I need to check. It's been a little while since I looked under there. Uh, it's it's the one spot brick that's not isolated. Yeah. Or like actually the ISO, it, like the MXR ISO brick. I believe it claim it claims to be isolated and then I got it and I was like, "Oh, you guys, I but remember this." And you guys you guys were like, "Phil, you're so dumb for buying that thing." And I was like, "It was so cheap." And you're like, "Yeah, that's why you that were dumb for buying it." It doesn't sound like the type of thing I would say. <laughs> that's how the that's how the MXR ISO brick was. Like it has separate outputs and they try and say it's isolated, but it's basically just daisy chained. In, yeah, but that one has a wall box, wart. You know? Like that actually has a wall wart plug, right? Yeah. This one has yeah, like what a, does yours have? It has the like the computer three pl prong uh detachable cord. Yeah, see, that makes me think it's potentially more legitimate. I know. Because they but, could actually be isolated between them. Yeah, the MXR one is like is is less legitimate than that but, one is potentially. When I bought it for substantially less money than like a Voodoo Labs or whatever. Um like Yeah. Like very, very less. And I had every uh every output used on it and i told you guys i was like hey i'm getting like some noise there's like a noise and you're like <laughs> and we were like uh -huh. yeah you idiot <laughs> yeah you're like uh-huh and i was like well why what what should i do to fix that and you're like uh return it throw it in the trash <laughs> and buy the one that we told you to buy it was something to that again effect. i have a hard time believing that we were that harsh with you <laughs> it doesn't sound like us <laughs> sounds like somebody else entirely it's, it was some, something okay like just for the record i'm i'm sure like some people are screaming at their ipods i meant the dc brick the iso brick is actually isolated the dc brick was the old the little mxr the little dinky i knew that's what you meant all just paralleled yes <clears throat> yeah i'm assuming most people knew that i meant that but i'm sure other people will be angry they wanted a chance to yell at you of course okay so and they got what it. are people Usually surprised to find out about you with gear. I mean, the biggest thing, and honestly, it's kind of like a negative with the guitar collection that I have is they ask me what guitars I have, and then they've never heard of any of them, obviously. <laughs> yeah, but well, okay. I'm not surprised. So they're to surprised that. to know that I have a bunch of expensive guitars and even guitarists are like, well, I guess that's cool. Like, yeah, that sounds fancy, yes. but like, you don't have a Les Paul? No, no. I yeah. own a Strat, I guess, but yeah. yeah. Like, I used to have a Fender that was like, um, you know, a yeah. mid-range thing, and they go, "Oh, yeah, that's cool." Now we're to now you're speaking my language, and then you're like, "Yeah, but these <laughs> ones are way 
cooler than that that you've never heard of. They're 100 times cooler and you've (laughs) never heard of them, even though you're like a serious guitarist. And that's the other thing. Like, this sounds like false modesty, but it's very valid modesty. Like, I am not good at guitar. And so, but maybe that's not surprising to a lot of people. It's like pretty common for people to just kind of lean more towards being a collector than a player. But like, I'm not as good at guitar as you might think if you knew how long I'd been playing and how many guitars I have and that I do a podcast about guitars and stuff. The the amount of money you have hanging on your wall. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Which is like, that's a pretty depressing one, but it's it's... It is very true. And whenever you say that, people think, again, when you're like, "Uh, well, I'm not that good. Everyone says that. And with a lot of people, it's false modesty. And with me, it just happens to not be, you know? Yeah. Yes. Yes. I I see what you're saying. Okay. So I have have a a topic if, uh, if, if you're ready for it. Yeah, I'm ready. So I was, I was made aware of a, a, f- I heard a phrase used. <laughs> I heard a phrase used that I had never heard before. Okay. Um, it was uh, I. It had to have been on TikTok recently, um, because I don't know where where else I would have heard this. the The phrase was "cop rock." Now, I looked it up. Oof, I've never not, heard that. Not cop rock, as in oh, the uh, late eighties, early nineties television show that is uh that is uh panned by all critics um it was a musical television show about uh police not that one this this person was referring to cop rock as let me guess what it is okay good guess it's very oppressive and authoritarian no it's kind of music you listen to if you got like really bad grades in high school. Okay, now you're getting closer. You're getting closer. <laughs> so, I mean, I would picture it as being like butt rock a little bit, as just kind of douchey rock. I don't know. Or is it like? So here's what's funny is like, I immediately thought of when I started think I was like, uh huh, okay, this band, this band. Like I started thinking of things, and then I thought, okay, cop rock is is like easier to say. But like, I was thinking when they started describing it, I was thinking this is more like, in my mo- mind, like armed forces rock. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, but is it like, is it like country ish, or is it like? No, it that has it nothing like... to do with it. It has to do with like, it's the kind of music that. And again, I will preface this by saying, I love all police officers that I know and respect uh but the, how do you the, feel I, about the ones that you don't know and don't respect well well some some of them i i don't like too much uh but it's the system phil okay that's true but there are definitely some it's just a few bad apples I, and like they always say a few bad apples don't spoil the bunch right that's what the saying is we just say few, few bad apples that's what we say right a few bad apples that's where the saying ends <laughs> What are we going to do with these few bad apples? That's that's the saying, I think. Uh, that's how it Yeah. Goes. It's just a few bad apples. They won't <laughs> they're not going to hurt the rest of the bunch. That's a as they say. I believe it's a few bad apples fall off the tree and they if they get caught they get a slap on the wrist. They fall off the tree but are still paid. They fall they receive administrative leave from the tree. They're still paid and maybe can move over to another tree a couple orchards over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And people won't remember them. And people people don't Okay. So just swipe it under the right. So is it am I like on the right track with butt rock though? Is it like disturbed and Okay, yes. So here it's funny that you say butt disturbed is butt rock because I well yeah, they're I don't yes, you're right. Those are two different genres, I guess. In in my mind, butt rock is a particular time period. And I I and we have talked about the definition of butt rock and how it's like that's it's not a particular time yeah, but period. I don't so even I think have... the definition matches what we call butt rock, right? I feel like I've, poison in my mind butt rock is, butt rock is like nickelback 
How? Yeah. But that's that's the thing is like butt rock used to mean something different than it does now. Butt rock used to mean like crappy 80s rock. And now it means yes. like Creed and Nickelback and stuff. Uh, OK, well, then then maybe maybe the, the Venn diagram of butt rock and cop rock is is like. There, there it is overlaps like over, overlap. Yeah. So if you um, if you Google butt rock, literally the first. Well, OK, this is interesting. The first image is. Is Creed and Motley Crue together. Hmm. So that's pretty inch. Oh, and then this one has like, okay, skillet is one that gets brought up a lot. Wow. Okay, this one has disturbed Creed, Godsmack. See, that's what I think of now. When I said butt rock as a kid, as a teenager, I meant eighties like Poison, yeah. Motley Crue, those bands. But as an adult, oh, and See, there's I apparently there's a calendar from 2016 that's a bunch of rocks that look like butts, which is kind of sexy actually. <laughs> See, it's funny because, like, now that we're talking about this, the term metal doesn't have – it has a beginning, but it doesn't have an end. Like, we're aware that, like, yeah. metal is, like, continues to shift and change. But, like, the term grunge is a very particular – What? Time period. Yes. Right? Totally. Metal. So, like, yeah. I didn't realize that butt rock was, like, metal and not – I assumed it was like grunge in that it was – like it's this time period, you know. So, so a lot of these lists have Seether and Shine Down pretty far up there. This one though, number on this Houston Press top ten butt rock bands of all time, they have freaking Anne Berlin on here. No, Anne no. Berlin's not butt rock. That's see, this is dumb. It's like they're just like emo. Yeah, that's that makes me angry. That like, it's so stupid. They have Chevelle on there too, which I see, but that one doesn't like fit with well, the rest the, of it. Chevelle is definitely okay. So here, here's the thing I was going to bring up it. So when I was thinking about like the, the, the term cop rock and what does that mean? And maybe we could like come up with something, but like in my mind in the late nineties, early two thousands, when, when new metal became like a thing, I associated like everybody that I knew that was very into new metal were like the kids that were getting bullied. <laughs> it was not the cool kids. It was like, yeah, it was it, the kids wearing freaking Jinko jeans and stuff. Yes. Yes. So corn in my mind is a quintessential. They're not, they're not cop rock. Yeah. You can't call them cop rock. You can't call them there because they were like the band that's for the, the, the weirdos who you're afraid are going to yeah. call them by your school. Not the jocks that are like, yes, you're right. Going to be right. prom king. So that made me think, okay, so what are the bands then that are like, these are the bands for the misfits. Like we're talking about heavy bands only. Although ironically, the misfits don't fit into that category. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, noted. So bands, I was thinking it would be fun to name bands and go, okay, is this, is this, a, so, is this a, uh, so I heard like we looked up at one point and the, and the thing, the reason it said it was called butt rock, like the reason we found, do you remember that is from people saying, Nothing oh, but rock, rock. Nothing but rock. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But, but it does look, I mean, it seems like the most generally accepted term for butt rock is, is like the new metal type stuff. The post new post grunge new metal. -y. It's like every list is showing like Seether and shine down Nickelback buck cherry, you know, Oh, but Ugh. then the weird thing is even in those same lists, it shows Motley Crue and they're like such a different type See, of music. Yes. And I would say so, so, weird. so like butt rock in my mind, it's, it's, poison. it's generational. It's poison. And like, that's the first band I think of. It is poisoning our children's <laughs> minds. 
But it is like if the definition is based on this idea that you're, listening, yes. that you're listening to the rock station and it plays nothing but rock, that station was like when you were a kid was the 80s metal. And when then when first... we were teenagers, it was in like early adulthood, it was the new metal creed and all that stuff, you know. Hmm. So I think it is like a generational thing. Just like how, like, take some of the broadest, like, indie rock or pop rock. Like, pop rock, when we were in high school or junior high or whatever, was, like, freaking Bare Naked Ladies or something. Or, like, you know what I'm saying, right? Oof. Maybe not pop rock, but just pop music. That's the first band you came up with were pop rock? Well, no, but I'm just saying, like, pop music at the time. Or even like I don't know who who else would you say in the late nineties? Um. Well, I think pop rock in the late nineties was pop punk. Okay, so that's a good so example. I then. would say, I but would say now Blink pop rock is is electronic music. Yeah, that's yes. kind of rocky. So yes. it's so like the gent the definition of butt rock has morphed in the same way, you know. But it seems like part of it is that you're never, you're always a little bit behind, right? Like, it's always music. It's always, if it's butt rock, it's always rock music from 10 years ago or whatever, or longer. Okay. That's another point that I want, that I'm glad you brought that up because I was wondering, does the idea that like corn in their beginnings were music for uh uh weirdos but at a certain point did they did they gain so much popularity yeah did they that, become like, the I, aggressors yes I, well d does the p the fan base become i remember being in eighth grade tool tool was a great example of that hmm okay well and it's like the cool kids start to like steal it they start to co-opt it right? yes i was gonna say I remember being in eighth or ninth grade and the cool kids, I I love Nirvana and the, the cool kids did some stupid, like, like the student government did, did some stupid skit using, um, smells like teen spirit. And I remember being really angry. Yeah. Cool kids are no, the worst. You don't get, you do not get to use yeah. this song. Like you, you didn't get earn, use... you yeah. didn't earn this. You didn't earn your stripes by wearing Jinko jeans. Not, not for Nirvana, but for corn. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. You didn't earn your stripes by wearing like a torn up sweater or a flannel shirt or something like that and getting made fun of for that. So you don't get to like, it's like yes. a, my culture is not your prom dress type thing. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And that was yes, the same Cole. way. It was exactly the same way with pop punk, which is such a funny genre of music to be territorial about because pop punk and ska are like the most happy go lucky. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like, oh, your your music sounds like the intro music to a freaking kids cartoon. And you're saying like, oh, I haven't earned the right to like this yeah, music. Get or your whatever. hands off it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's bull crap. You like less than Jake. And it's like. Yeah, who doesn't? Like, my grandma probably <laughs> likes them. They're fun to listen to. <laughs> <I> know, <yeah. laughs> Obviously. <laughs> my grandma would love this. <laughs> yeah. She... Oh, man. That's weird how ska really did become... It It really... It, it's not just because of Yo Gabba Gabba either, but there are a lot of kids' shows and maybe even other kinds of shows where the music is kind of... Well, heck, like America's Funniest Videos. Their music is all basically ska, right? No. We yeah, got ass from coast to coast. No, that's to that's make like you smile. that's like a hundred years ago. Modern AFB, there are horns in it, which they don't even call it America's funniest. It was called America's funniest videos for a while, uh -huh. but then I think they wanted to get the America out of there, <laughs> and maybe even vid. No, video is still a valid. Like they got yeah, rid of home videos the... because nobody even uses the term home video anymore. Right. We still but now use it's video. just called AFV. I think it's, it's. I think it's funny that we. St okay, but, but so is that? It's so like a KFC. Like... They got the KFC treatment. Yeah. So then they can like 
internationally uh i guess which is like yeah i mean i don't know what that like i don't know if that's the reason for it or if it's just easier to say AFV or something. America's okay, how, funniest videos is a lot of syllables. But how badass would have would it have been if they rebranded to Earth's funniest <laughs> videos? <laughs> <laughs> this we are not we are not sticking to America anymore, you guys. <laughs> that would be pretty We're great. busting this wide but open. But like screw aliens. If we get a submission from an alien, <laughs> we are not accepting it. Because of all the legal, it's you know, yeah, you run into right. issues. They have with... different different legal systems, and yeah. Have you ever tried to submit a video to AFV? No. It's all we. I think we might have sent a video when I was a kid. We have a couple very funny, as everyone does. Like that, you know, they obviously don't have the best videos in the world. It's just the best videos with which people also chose to submit. You know. But yeah. when you submit online, it's all it's all digital nowadays, Phil. The okay. videos, they all just live in the cloud. Okay. But when you when you submit it, you give like full ownership to them. Like yeah. you know you no longer own any aspect of those videos, you know. <laughs> so that's why aliens can't submit cuz they aren't beholden to our legal that yeah, right. Our legal system, you know. Okay, so and when I say aliens, I mean people who are here illegally, obviously. <laughs> so you're saying my my idea won't work because because illegal aliens can't submit. Yeah. It's Earth's, Earth's it's Earth's funniest, funniest videos. videos, but only for people who chose to stay in the place where they were born. You know, Earth's the way God intended. Funniest legal citizen videos. <laughs> yeah, kind of a, kind of a mouthful. But... Earth's funniest. Social security card holding videos. Earth's funniest. Stay where you are. Yeah. Don't step out of line. Stay where God put you. Yeah. Phil, thanks for friendship. Cole, thanks for friendship. Aaron, Aaron and the babies, wherever you are, thanks for friendships. Can we say thanks for friendships to his babies? No. Oh